Hello there! I wanted to share with you the process of how I made this little hue maquette from Final Space. But first off, I wanted to show the failed attempt, or more so my first attempt, until I decided to go through the more difficult process of adding a working light. So as you can see, I basically just did tin foil and then moved on to clay sculpey, which is oven baked clay where is if I wanted to add a light to him, the way I would have to wire it, I couldn't put him in the oven. <laughs> so I had to figure out ways to use air drying clay. My first process is always drawing out the character to the size that I want from the straight forward view and from the side view. As for materials go, I first use wire. Now the wire I used in this video is not the wire I'd recommend using. This 14 gauge wire from Amazon, which will be in the link, is the wire that I recommend using. <laughs> also, here is the air drying clay that I used for the official Hue maquette. I needed a hollow base in order to string the lights in, and so I used a paper roll. Um, I also used hot glue and this little bottle cap. Then I used the, just a little, like, container where I could sit the cap in and let the paint dry, but it had a little divot in the bottom so that the, it wouldn't, um, all the sides of the cap wouldn't be stuck to it. I also used plain clear fingernail polish and I used this to coat the inside of the cap after painting it. That way when I used the fairy lights, the wire from it didn't scratch the paint off. Here are all the colored paints that I ended up using. And then I coated the figure in DuraClear Matte Varnish because it adds a little bit of shine and it protects the paint from being scratched off. And then, of course, a Parmesan cheese container <laughs> to clean my brushes in. And I also used, I got a whole pack of the sandpaper and my favorite ones to use ended up being the 240 and the 400. And something that is very important is a respirator because <laughs> you don't want to be breathing in all the dust that you're sanding off of the figure. So it's, it's, a, it's a must. <laughs> and here are most of the materials that I use kind of just scattered about. <laughs> so first what I had to do was take the paper roll and cut it to the right size to fit Hugh's body. Now the reason I had to use a paper roll is because I needed something hollow to string the lights through so that the light could go from his from the cap on top of his head through and the switch could be placed on his back control panel which worked out perfectly for this character originally i was going to string it through his feet so the switch would be on the back of his foot but this ended up working a lot better <laughs> For the wire part, I basically hot glued, because I can use hot glue because I'm using air dry clay. If I was using the oven baked clay, I wouldn't be able to use hot glue until after I baked the clay. So for this version two of you, I hot glued pieces of wire where his legs and where his arms will go. Now for his arms, I ended up cutting holes into the side of the paper towel roll and then stuck them on the inside and glued down into the hollow part. Um, it's very hard to explain, but it was the best way to get them to hold on to the paper towel roll without falling off because the last thing you want is to be entirely <laughs> done with it and one of their arms or legs falls off because that has happened to me before and you feel very defeated because <laughs> it's very hard to go back there and fix. So I was very careful to secure the wire with a lot of hot glue and very much so from the inside of the, the tube. That way it'd be harder to uh, rip off from the outside. <laughs> I also cut out where the, I guess like the little wire, I guess, where that connects from his head to his back. I also cut out two little holes in the paper roll and stuck wire through there to create like a little C shape. Um, here what I'm doing is cutting out a little circular shape about the size of the paper towel, the paper, whatchamacallit, 
and that way I can create a bottom to hold the rocks that I will include later on to make hue heavier. And here is the how the little light will look coming out from the top. It's very it's very cute. The next thing I did was add the tin foil. So the tin foil even though I know I'm not baking it in the oven is really helpful for bulking out the character before adding clay. That way you don't have to use as much clay. The easiest way to use tin foil is to lay it out and fold it into thin sheets and then pack it on that way. And again, since I'm not putting this in the oven, I use hot glue to secure it. If I was doing oven baked clay, I could not do that and would most likely either, oh, I don't know, I'd probably um, take a sharp object to stab the tin foil together, which I believe I've done before and works pretty well, or I would take clay and start to add to it to help secure it. Um, so if you are gonna use oven baked clay, just know do not use hot glue on the tin foil before putting it in the oven. That, that's the recommendation I would give. And after this, I got a pretty good base for how I wanted him to look via the tin foil, and I really helped bulk out his body for me to understand like what's gonna go where when adding the clay. And now it is time to add the clay. So because it is air dry clay, I keep it in a sealed Ziploc bag and after every time I grab some of the clay, I very quickly seal it back up because <laughs> I did not want it to dry up on me during this process. And once I grab some of the clay, I'll start to knead it out and rip it apart a little bit and then add it in smaller amounts and try my best to smooth it out. This process is, I want to say, one of the longest. It, it's, pretty, it's a pretty long process, but it depends on whatever figure I'm making, how long it will take. Because I'm not as used to working with air dry clay, it was a little bit more difficult. Um, and it was a bit hard to smooth out <laughs> because it dried so quickly. So a lot of the times what I would do is I would use the air dry clay in small amounts in certain areas, let it dry, and then pack more on. Because I found it was very difficult to pack on large amounts because it moved a lot, I guess is the best way to describe it. Here is a bit of a look into the process of how I made his light, or like how I took the, basically the cap and filled it with paint, and then I let the paint drain. Um, this was a bit of a tricky progress. It took me a couple tries to get it right. Um, afterwards, that's when I also started using the clear fingernail polish onto the very tedious process of sanding down the clay. Now, to my happy surprise, <laughs> this clay was actually very easy to sand down. It did not take a lot of time to get the clay to smooth out. The problem with this was is that in some parts the clay smoothed out or I guess shaved off so quickly that I would have to go back over and reapply clay, wait for it to dry, and then shave some parts down a little bit more. It wasn't, I would say, easy to shave down, but it was definitely easier than the Sculpey Oven Bake Clay. Um, relying on sanding for a bumpy um, polymer clay was or oven bait clay was very difficult, but the sanding for this air drying clay was much easier. Um, I also did put on the respirator mask for this part, and I'm very glad I did. After this whole process was over, I had white dust everywhere. It took me quite some time to clean up. Um, so I'm very glad that I was not breathing that in for the the many hours I spent sanding down <laughs> little hue over here. <laughs> the 
Here's me again, messing with the light some more. <laughs> I took some normal rocks that I just got from the craft store and added that into the paper roll. Um, this act is a really good weight for Hue because the air dry clay is pretty light and so is the paper roll itself. So this really helped to weigh him down, keep him on his feet and just give him a nicer feel when holding him. Top of his head, the easiest way to do it was by taking the air drying clay and starting to build up like inch or centimeter by centimeter a, a small like lid, letting it dry and then adding a little bit more. And this proved to be the best way to do it. Also, after the clay completely dried, I went over with sandpaper and smoothed that down as well. I also glued on the cap from there and the little like ribbon-like ridge that goes around his light um, at the base, I added a little bit later, let that dry, sanded that down, and also painted that during the painting process. I do think one of the hardest things to sand down was his arms because they the air drying clay did not do well or at least too well at at almost like connecting to the dried <laughs> air drying clay um and so his arms were so fragile that while i was putting a lot of pressure on them to sand them down i had them break so many times i'd have to fix them wait for the air drying clay to dry, tried smoothing that down with sandpaper, and then it would break. It was it was a very difficult process, but I am very happy with how his arms turned out, even if there are some things that now I would have done differently. And I also took some of the clay, made them into little circles, let that dry, and sanded that down because that is going to be Hugh's eyes. I also added some extra clay a little bit behind it so that it could stand out or kind of like his eyes do instead of like flat against the curve of his, of his little head. And now I'm using a paintbrush to dust off the excess powder from sanding him down. And the painting process, which always takes longer than I think it will, but is always so nice to just watch or listen to something and just paint. <laughs> it's, it's a very nice feeling, especially on little figures like this. Um, and I don't remember it being too difficult to get the colors right, but I did do, he's, he's, he has like a gray color to him, but it has a, almost like a purpley hue to it. So I added purple, black, and white together to make his body color. And then for the other accents, it was pretty much just yellow and then some orange here and there. And that was pretty easy because I just used the yellow paint that I had. And then for his eyes, I used um, some yellow and red for the orange. And pretty much the only other color was <laughs> um, the like little like black outlines, which I ended up using a black like ink pen for because that was the easiest way to do it instead of doing paint. Um, the paint was a little less forgiving <laughs> or a little the paint was a little less the, the paint was a little harder to control on a paintbrush um, because of how many like bristles I guess the paintbrushes have but with the it was like a felt pen that I used and that worked a lot better on the black lines. <laughs>
and little Hugh is done. And here are some photos that I took after he was finished. And I'm very happy with how he came out because I was not sure if I could manage this. And the sweet lady who commissioned me for him named Haley Mullins, she loved him and that just warmed my heart more than anything seeing how excited she got when she got to see him it was it was it was just such a such a fun feeling um, and thanks to all of you for watching this video I love making these kind of videos and I really hope that they are fun to watch for other people and I hope you have a lovely day thank you again for watching and I will see you in the next video goodbye also if you're wondering I did not throw away um, the, the carnage from my first attempt. He is really just sitting in my closet, and I plan to use some of the clay for other projects, but he's, he's still, still alive, I guess.